I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the NI Machina tutorials from Producer Tech. The aim of this course is to take you from the very beginning right through to advanced operation, covering each aspect of the software and hardware, and showing numerous examples of how different styles of music can be made. This module is going to provide an overview and teach you the basic architecture of Machina, so you can start to get an idea for how it works before going through everything in much greater detail on the remainder of the course. And then the course ends with a huge lesson which puts all of the techniques together into a practical example, which makes an entire track from scratch. So let's get started. Machina is essentially a software program, so it can be opened on your computer in standalone mode or as a plugin within your music software, after which it can be used to create beats, instrumental or other parts, or even entire songs. The hardware is simply a dedicated control surface for the software, so it doesn't need to be connected to use the program. But it makes the whole process quicker and simpler at times, as well as much more fun, of course. I'll open the software in standalone mode first, so by double clicking the Machina application on my computer, after which a new project window appears. Then what I'll do is load the project that we'll be making in the last lesson on the course, which I'll do by going to the Machina menu and then choosing File and Open, and then browsing to the project I want. At this point, as we're using Machina in standalone mode, we may need to make sure that the audio output is set correctly. So I can do this by going to the software's File menu again and choosing Audio and MIDI settings. Then, under the Audio tab, I make sure the device I want audio to come out of is selected here. This can be your computer's built-in sound, or an audio interface if you have one installed and connected. Now, if I play the project, by clicking play at the top here, or using the button in the transport section of the hardware, you can hear the song starts to play. The top half is much like the arrangement section of a DAW or sequencer, with the song going from left to right as you can see by the scrolling position marker on the grey bar. This shows how far through the current scene you are. A scene is a vertical column with a particular combination of patterns for each of the parts in the song. Rather than play all the scenes in the arrangement, I can also click on the bar below a particular scene to loop that one on its own instead. The different parts in the arrangement are shown on the left hand side, and these are the drums, bass, and other instruments that make up the song. These are called groups, and there are eight available, labelled A to H. I can turn these on and off by clicking on the letters at the end here, or even faster, by holding down the mute switch on the hardware and then pressing any of the group switches to the left. And I can also solo any groups using the solo button in the same way to check out a group on its own. So as you can see, each of the groups can be a number of different things. From a factory drum kit containing different drum samples loaded onto each of the pads, to a collection of FX or other samples you load onto the pads yourself, to one or more instruments, which can be played with all the pads as you can see. I find this a particularly cool and original way of making bass lines and melodies, as you can easily learn the different pads that make certain chords, and then just transpose the pads up and down to change the key you're playing in, as we'll be looking at later on in the course. In the lower half of the software window is the pattern section, which is where you view, edit, and create patterns for groups. Every group has 16 pattern slots, 
as you can see by the numbered switches. And then a further three banks of 16 should you need even more. For example, with my main drums group here, you can see throughout the arrangement that the pattern numbers, which are shown in the orange blocks, are changing constantly. If I play the song again with the drums soloed and then click on some different scenes, you can see the pattern changing below, where certain drums are dropping in or out and the pattern is changing in some way. And you'll notice that the pattern section looks a lot like a regular MIDI editor in a DAW, with a bar ruler at the top and a grid below containing MIDI notes, or events as Machina refers to them. These events can be displayed in pad mode, where there's a row for each pad in the group, or in keyboard mode, when the events are playing melodies or chords. Then, in between the pattern and scene sections is the modules section, where there are four slots for adding instruments and effects, either from Machina's factory library or your external plugin collection. The switches on the end set whether you apply modules to sounds within a group, the whole group, or the master channel, so all groups together. And Machina's library alone provides a wide variety of high quality effects, including dynamics processors equalization, modulation effects, reverbs, delays, and distortion. We'll be going through many of these effects on the course in the two dedicated effects lessons, where we'll look at how to apply them as inserts to parts, as well as send effects, as Machina has internal routing that allows you to use sounds within a group as auxiliary channels for applying more advanced effects processing. Additionally, if I open up the browser using the switch here, and then click on the FX switch at the top, you can see there's a whole host of effects from other NI instruments that can also be added to parts. The browser is where you can find all of the saved presets for Machina, whether they're projects, so complete arrangements, groups, so a collection of different sounds mapped onto all the pads in a group, which is mostly different drum kits, instruments, which are sampled sounds that you can load onto a pad in a group, any other synthesized or sampled presets from the NI collection that you can load onto a pad, or samples, which are drums or one-shots, again for loading onto pads in a group. And, as with other NI instruments, you have attributes alongside, which can be selected to help you narrow down your search. Machina also has an extensive sampling facility, with a comprehensive set of editing features for slicing, truncating, time stretching, and so on. And you can also record your own samples too, for adding your own individual hits, loops, or longer vocal or instrumental phrases. So far then, I've mainly shown you the software, but the real beauty of Machina is just how much you can do with the hardware. Web browsing and even editing can be done incredibly quickly and easily. Although I've very much been a mouse user in the past, Machina has made music making much more hands on for me, and I found that using a combination of the software and hardware, I can achieve a really fast and efficient workflow. Just to give you a quick example, then, let's start with a new project. And I'm adding a kit to Group A now by browsing from the hardware. I'm making it an analog kit. Now I'll set my tempo to 140 BPM, then turn on the metronome, hit record, and then shift record to give myself a count in, after which I can record in a one bar loop. Then I can add parts one by one as I like, by coming in and out of record. Then 
Then I can do things like double the length of the pattern, so it's two bars long, and then add something to the end of the second bar to give it a bit more variety. And then keep adding parts if I want to, using the erase button to get rid of parts if I don't like them. Then in group B, I've browsed to an instrument sound this time, which I'm playing in keyboard mode. So using all the pads to play in a melodic part. So let's record that in to go with the beats. And I can even add and tweak effects on the fly. as well as record that filter tweaking if I want. And now let's add a bass in group C. I can just pick any bass at first. Then change the sound later. As well as edit the bass's events from the hardware, like transpose them up and down, or change their length and so on. So I did all that in about 5 minutes, without touching the computer, and already have a nice groove I can use as a basis for a track. So you'll probably have noticed from that quick demo there, that you have all sorts of useful controls on the hardware for changing modes and editing parts. We've seen the solo and mute ones a fair bit already, but there's also a select button which allows you to select sounds or events on a pad, a pattern button for allowing you to select patterns with the pads, and a scene button for allowing you to select scenes. And each time you can see on the display what scene or pattern the pad relates to. All of these modes can also be locked or pinned. This is done using the top left button above the screens in each mode, after which the mode can be turned on and off with consecutive presses rather than you having to hold the mode button down. Then you also have the shift button, which changes the function of many of the controls on the hardware. For example, all of the pads have shift commands, which you can see above, with the most common ones being undo and redo, which you can carry out by pressing shift and pad 1, and shift and pad 2, respectively. And the shift button also provides a shortcut to some of the mode buttons, where shift and select allows you to immediately select events on a pad, without having to go into select mode and change the status of the select button. Then you have copy and paste on pads 11 and 12, which are also very handy, and then nudging. And transposing. and also clearing, which is another common one. So editing is often just as fast, if not faster, with the hardware than with the software. Finally, the software window is totally customizable, as you can change the overall size with the view menu. As well as change which sections are shown using the switches in the corners, to remove certain areas when you're not using them. And this can all be done from the hardware once again of course, using the buttons in navigate mode.
That's given you an introduction to Machina then. So you should now have a rough idea how it works. Like I said at the start, we'll be going through each of those things in much greater detail as we work through the course. So don't worry if you got lost in one or two places. Make sure you download the course pack before continuing, so you can get your hands on all the Machina presets and additional course materials. Next time, we're going to be diving straight in with basic pattern creation, so you can learn all about how to start constructing a beat. See you then.